all, this is an unofficial season two. Uh, we are changing things on the fly. And uh, I'm glad to be back in Kenya, glad to be back here at our famous studio of the Nairobi Executive Suites, and glad that you are all here. And uh, what I want to do is to try to work from this brochure. We're going to give you a quick overview of this brochure. Uh, I've taught it to you uh, before, uh, but it has the two basic components are J1 and J2. If you remember, we talked about that in our last season. All Christians are judged twice. First is to see whether or not you're a believer, and then the second is to see how did you live your life? Was it for your kingdom or God's. God's, kingdom. God's kingdom? That's right. And most people think, uh, and I'm going to be very upfront with you guys. You guys already know I'm an honest person <laughs> to a fault, my wife will say. <laughs> that 99% of the theologians, pastors in America are going to disagree with what I'm going to teach you today. And probably 99% of the pastors here in Kenya are probably going to disagree with what I say. But it's the only way that I can read scriptures. And if you recall, I try to find a way of reading the scriptures or interpreting the scriptures that has the least amount of problems. And this has the least amount of problems. Passages that theologians have such a hard time understanding now make total sense. Because I understand something about this restoration fire. So usually when we talk about Judgment Day, which rarely is talked about in the church, if we talk about the church in Judgment Day, here's what they say. You die, here's the death right here, you come to Judgment Day, and on Judgment Day, all of the bad things you've done have been covered by the blood of Jesus, and only the good things that you have done will result in rewards. And then you'll be escorted to the wedding banquet. Okay? Yeah. Now, I will agree with that to a point. And that point is this. If you have been consistently repenting of your sins. Do you remember in our Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. How many times does he want us to forgive our trespasses? Every time. Daily, yeah. If it's in the context of being daily, every time we're saying, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Now, I think you and I both know of people, Christians, who don't really worry about their sin. They're not confessing it. They think, since I've passed J1, I'm good. Everything is clean, and I can do whatever I want. Now, we learned last night that your sins have been... Nailed to the cross, you do have freedom. But Paul says, I don't encourage you to use it for the lust of the flesh. Because if you do use it for the lust of the flesh, you're not going to get rewards. You're not going to inherit your kingdom. And we saw last time there's a difference between entering the kingdom of God and inheriting the kingdom of God. So, most Christians will say, you come here, you get your rewards, and you go there. I was, uh, I was here in Kenya with my wife, oh, three years ago or so, and she read a devotion by a very well-known theologian in America, and he basically said those words. He said, on Judgment Day, you don't need to worry about anything that you've done in your sin. It's all covered by the blood of Jesus. And I say, if you've been, been repenting, I agree with him. But if you've not been repenting, I see scripture that says, oh, no, wait a second. There are some Christians who are not going to become a part of the bride of Christ, and they're going to have to get right with God and be restored in their relationship or in their fellowship with God. Now, do you remember the scripture that teaches us why I believe every Christian is not going to be a part of the bride? Let's go to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, starting in verse 7. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. 
The wedding of the lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. McKenna, do you remember what I said? The scriptures do not say that would help me believe that everybody would be a part of the bride of Christ. Who made the bride ready? Herself. Had the text said, Jesus made the bride ready, I believe everyone would be part of the bride. bride. But the text doesn't say that. It says the bride made her. So how did she do it? Let's look at the next verse. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. The righteous acts of God's holy people or the righteous acts of the saints. Now, had that text said the fine linen, so what she's wearing, a, a wedding dress, fine white, right? That's, that's where we get the white dress for most people who, most ladies who get married, they want a bright white dress, clean. Clean represents purity, holiness, righteousness. So that fine linen represented the righteous deeds of the saints. Had it said the righteous deeds of Jesus, I would believe that all Christians would be the bride. That all Christians would be a part of the bride, but it doesn't say that. It said the righteous deeds of the saints. Therefore, I do not believe that every Christian that gets judged goes to the wedding banquet. I don't believe all Christians go to the wedding banquet. I think there are some who are not allowed into the wedding banquet banquet. Okay? Let's go over uh, another passage that helps me believe this. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name that you are alive, but in reality, you are dead. Okay, two key things there. First off, Vivian, why doesn't he say, I know your faith? Why doesn't he say? Yeah, why doesn't he say, I know your faith? Isn't faith what gets us into heaven? Yeah, so why doesn't he say, I know your faith? He says, I know your deeds. Why is he talking about deeds? What is the primary goal? What did God think of in eternity past? What was his game plan? Just for us to get into heaven? No. no. For us to what? Rule and reign. And what is required for ruling and reigning? Good works. Good works. So he says, I know your deeds. He wants to examine. He's talking about J2 here. He's not talking about J1. You've already passed J1. <laughs> I know you have faith. I'm writing to the church in Sardis. You're already Christians. It's fine. But I'm talking, I know your deeds. And what are their deeds like? What does it say? I know your deeds. You have a name that you are alive, but in reality you are dead. What's he saying? Kyle, put that in your own words. You're alive, but in reality you're dead. Uh, basically that um, spiritually you're alive, but uh, physically you're dead. Kind of. Give an everyday term we would use for these type of Christians. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. He says the majority of the people in your church are hypocrites. Well, that's encouraging. <laughs> but I see that in a lot of churches today, right? Okay, he says you're a bunch of hypocrites. Verse 2. Wake up and strengthen and reaffirm what remains, which is about to die. For I have not found any of your deeds completed in the sight of my God or meeting his requirements. Okay, wake up. What's another way of saying wake up? Why would we say that today? What do you say to hypocrites? Repent. Repent. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Repent. Wake up. What is about to die? What's about to die? Their faith. Not that they can lose their salvation, but it's getting weaker and weaker. So they have faith. They're believers. Wake up. Strengthen what remains. Is it about to die? For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Caleb, any idea what that means? You're, you're still not complete. You're hypocrites in a way. Okay, you're still not complete. Okay, um, Grace, in only your Bible, turn to Psalm 139, verse 16. I want you to see something in Psalm 139, verse 16, and then I want to try to help you to understand this. Why he says, I've not found your works complete in the sight of my God. 
Okay. Your eyes saw me when I was formless. All my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them began. What is it? Put it in your own words, Grace. So before God brought grace on earth, he already had every single day of mine planned out. Yeah. God's got a plan for your life, McKenna. Mm. And he knew it before he even created you. Holy cow, really? Yep. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't tell them all to you at once because you would freak out. Okay, had God told me that I was going to be speaking to a Wata village of Muslims, sharing my testimony to all the elders and the leaders and the, the uh, imams, I'd have said, no way. I'm, hey, I'm not going to Africa. And uh, that's what most Americans think. It's, they're crazy. And, uh, and B, you know, I just, I'm, I'd be too afraid. But no, that's where I was last time I was here, speaking. God knows every day planned out. And I want to take a fictional number. Just to, This is a pulling a number out of the sky. Understand that? God wants you to do 100 things to earn the right to be a part of the bride. That's a very low number. He's a very gracious God. I just want you to do a couple of key things, 100, I mean, out of your whole life, 100 things to earn the right to be a part of the bride. And... Grace, go to Revelation 2, 17. Actually, McKenna, you've got it right there in your Bible. I'm sorry, uh, Vivian, you've got it right there in your Bible. Revelation 2, 17. What happens if we finish strong? Listen to these words. Uh, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone with a new name written on the stone that no one knows except the one who receives it. To the one who conquers, that means finishes strong. Remember we talked last time. You've got to finish strong to earn the right to be a part of the bride. Okay, to the one who finishes strong, there's three things. I give you hidden manna. Hidden manna. Manna is bread, right? A type of bread. Why, if Jesus is going to give you bread, what do you think you're going to do with it? With whom? If Jesus gave it to you, probably with him, right? Which speaks of intimate fellowship. Some people get to eat and dine with Jesus. Others, you'll eat and dine, but maybe not as closely with Jesus as you wanted to. You'll be way on down at the table. <laughs> but he says, if you finish strong, you're going to be right there with me. Then they get a white stone, right? What's a white stone? Back in those days, a white stone represented a ticket. A ticket? What do I get a ticket to, Sonia? If I finish strong. To rule. I'm not so sure. You're right there. What is it? <laughs> and where are you going to figure out where you're going to rule and reign? You get a ticket to the wedding banquet. Oh. And then what's, what are you going to hear? Uh, you, with a new name written. On a new name. Do you know that Jesus was in the, and God loves to give nicknames? Abram got turned into? Abraham. Jacob got turned into? Israel. Peter got turned into? The rock. Bartholomew was? Encourager. On and on. He gave nicknames. Guess what? I think that text is telling us every one of us has a nickname. God has a nickname for us in heaven. But only if we finish strong. If we're an overcomer, God has a nickname for us. <laughs> so, we're getting back to Revelation chapter 3. I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Paraphrase that. Caleb, I want you to do a hundred things, but you haven't even done 50, 40, 30. You haven't even done 13. You're a bunch of hypocrites. But that's not what I want for you. I want you to rule and reign. I had that plan from the very beginning of time. Okay? So, go on. Verse 3. Sonia. So remember and take to heart the lessons you have received and had. Keep and obey them and repent. Continue. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all of verse 3. Oh, sorry. So then, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. So he's saying, basically, get your act together, quit being a hypocrite, walk with me. If you do not, I'll come like a thief. 
Vivian, what do thieves do? Steal. And what is he going to be stealing from them, Kyle? Uh, the rewards. You're right, the rewards. And what's the greatest reward? Ruling and reigning. Ruling and reigning. I'm going to take that away from you. You don't get to go to the wedding banquet. Okay, this is starting to make a little sense. Verse 4. Yet. Okay, yet. Stop. I'm sorry, I'm going to stop you right there. Yet. He's switching from the hypocrites to the... The real guys. The real guys. The guys that are really... Well, we can't say real guys. That makes it sound like the others are not Christians. Yeah. So the strong Christians. He's talking from the weak Christians to the strong Christians. Go, go ahead. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white for they are worthy. Who have not soiled their clothes. What happens when you soil your clothes? They become dirty. They become dirty, so they're not clean and white. Oh, clean and white represents purity and the wedding dress. So there are a few people whose dresses are still clean and white. They're walking with me. They're making good choices. This is all about choices, men and women, choices you make in life. Okay? So, read it again. They, they've, they've got, they have not soiled their garments. They have walked, they will walk with me dressed in white. Oh, stop. Dressed in white. What does that mean? Walk with me. Where are they walking? Down the aisle. Down the aisle. Grace knows that a lot more than you because she's anxiously waiting to walk down the aisle. Right. They'll walk with me in white. Purity. For they are worthy. <gasps> no. It says they are worthy? No, we are unworthy, aren't we? Okay. For J1. Oh. Unworthy for J1, but worthy for? J2. Oh, that's why the Bible says both. We are both unworthy and worthy. worthy. Worthy, why? Because I made choices to live for God's kingdom. And I called upon the power of His Holy Spirit. He kept whispering into my ear, go this way. And I said, yes. And I kept saying, yes. He said, Bob, go to Africa. I said, okay, yes. Go do this, yes. Go do this. We are worthy. Luke 17, 7 through 10 says, hey, when you have your, your servants, they're out in the field, and then they come in, they should make you dinner. And when they make you dinner, they should feed you. And then they should say, yeah, we did this because we are unworthy servants. Okay, that says we're unworthy. Revelation 3 says we're worthy. That was referencing, that Luke was referencing J1. This is referencing J2. You can be both unworthy and worthy. Unworthy for J1, worthy for J2. Okay, next verse. This is when it starts getting exciting. The one who is victorious will like them be dressed in white. I will never blot out their name. Pardon? I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay. There's a lot in there. Mm -hmm. First off, what kind of people are we talking about? What type of Christians? What's the word they use? To the one who conquers, to the one who overcomes, to the one who finishes strong. Do you remember where that word came from? What's the Greek word? Nikeo. Nikeo from where we get what word? Nike. Nike. Right. You had on yesterday Nike shoes. Today you have on Converse, it looks like. I have no idea. Uh, and so, but you had Nike shoes. It has the, the Nike has that stripe. Okay. He got the name for his company from this Greek word. It means to finish strong. He wanted all of his athletes to finish strong. So he made this company named Nike. And so now we're talking about Nike Christians, those who finish strong. What's the first thing he says? To him who finishes strong, they walk with me in white. So they've got the wedding dress on. They're going to be a part of the bride. They'll have their names in the book of life. Mm, that's not what it says. I will never blot out the name. I will not blot out their name from the book of life. <laughs> so, whoa, that sounds like you can what, McKenna? Blot out a name out of the book of life. It sounds like you can what? Lose salvation. your salvation, right? If God will blot our name out of the book of life, it sounds like we can lose our salvation. Right? Yeah. yeah. How do we deal with this? The word name, the Greek word for name, is used in verse 1. Tell me what that, tell me what that is. 
Reread verse 1. It's the same Greek word, but it's translated differently. Uh, verse 1 of the same chapter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To the angel of the church. No, no, just look at your, go through it, just with your own eyes, just quietly. What word? What word? Reputation. Reputation. Very good. So the Greek word can either mean your name or your reputation. So tr give us verse 3 again with that other word. Uh, it was verse, verse 5. To the one who overcomes, that walk with me with light. I'll never blot out the, repu the reputation of that person from the book of life. Oh. So I was teaching a bunch of 16-year-olds uh, back where I live in, in uh, uh, Virginia. And uh, the one 16-year-old said these words. Oh, Mr. Shogren, you mean our names are written in ink in the Book of Life and our reputation is written in pencil? And I said, that's brilliant. That's exactly it. Our names are written in ink. We can never lose our salvation. But our reputation, God may... You didn't earn the right to be called mighty woman. You didn't earn the right to be called woman of faith because you didn't finish strong. If you did, I'm not going to erase it. I've, I already gave you a nickname before you were even born because I knew what you were going to do. I knew what I wanted you to do if you followed my Holy Spirit. So I'm not going to erase his name out of the book of life. Okay? Now, one last thing in verse 5. What is it? <clears throat> But will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. I will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. Vivian, what do you think Jesus is acknowledging? What's he saying to the father and to the angels? We're here, the context. We're at J2. Okay. Did we go over wood, hay, and stubble last, last time? Gold, silver, precious stones. So their works get, the fire comes up, it burns it all, and there's a bunch of gold, silver, and precious stones from the one who conquers. What's Jesus saying to God the Father? Father, this one is worthy to be a part of my bride. Father, this one's worthy to be a part of my bride. Okay? Now, I call this theology by implication. What's implied? What's Jesus saying to the hypocrites? Caleb, what's he going to say? Father, this one is not worthy to be a part of my pride. This one's not worthy to be a part of my pride. No wonder there are tears in heaven. You know that there are tears in heaven? Do you remember this? Yes. Revelation 21.4, Jesus says, I will come away and wipe away Every tear. Not everyone is going to be a part of the wedding banquet. They won't be a part of the bride. Now, we'll go one, one more verse, Sonia. Revelation 19, verse 9. We already looked at verse 8. The, righteous, the, the wedding garment represents the righteous deeds of the saints. And then we read these words, verse 9. Then the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Grace, you've never set a date yet, so you've never sent out invitations, I assume. Yeah. Correct? Correct? If your date gets set, let me ask you a question. Are you going to give yourself an invitation? No. No. <laughs> No. What does this verse seem to imply? Those that are actually not getting married are the ones who have been invited. There are some who are not going to actually be married, but they get to watch the marriage take place. They'll be guests watching those who were faithful. And they're not outside in the weeping and gnashing of teeth. They're not outside in the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Correct. I want to suggest, we're going to learn more tomorrow or later today, I'm not sure which, there are three different types of people these scriptures are referencing. Those who are part of the bride, those who 
attend. They could have done better, but they had healthy fellowship with God. And then those who are in the outer darkness who had no fellowship. And we'll go over that later. Kyle, name one thing you learned new. One thing that I learned new is that um, the three people that are uh, <laughs> the three people that are uh, that are there, those ones that are going to be that are faithful to God, those who watch the wedding, and those that are not uh, faithful at all. Good, McKenna. Not everyone is going to be part of the bride one. Well, that's enough. You got to save some for your sister because she'll say, "My sister took it." Vivian. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> that there would be uh, guests watching in the in the wedding banquet. Good, yeah. Caleb. Yeah, there will be tears. People will be wiped tears. There will be tears in heaven. Good, Sonia. Um, your name never gets off, gets rubbed off the book of life. Just your reputation. Your reputation can be erased. Something else that. It's not that he's writing new things that he discovered about you as you go. Those are things he'd already predestined, so it's rubbing off if you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not that, oh, Sonny can do this. No. As in, he already wrote them, says that he knows Sonny. Which would mean we want to be praying, Lord, what is your will for my life today? Now, does he write it on the wall? <laughs> as a, if he has, he's never done it for me. I'll just have to tell you that one. <laughs> I've never had it written on the wall, Bob, go to Africa. Uh, uh, it's a walk of faith. I take it by faith. I'm doing what God wants me to do. I may be surprised when I get to heaven and guys says, good try. <laughs> You'll get to be a guest. Uh, and you know, to God be the glory if that's what it is. To be judged before we then just go, all right, I'm out guys. No, Bye. no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, but hopefully, even though I'm walking by faith and just, all I do is I look at the Word of God. Well, this, I'm supposed to make him famous. I mean, that's basically what this book is telling me. I'm supposed to love people, make God famous. I think going to Africa and taking homeschoolers there would be famous. That would make, that would help the homeschoolers. And then found out, oh, I've got, I can help a lot of people in Africa too. And it just, one thing opened up another door, opened up another door, opened up another door. Uh, but uh, it, it was walking by faith, that's all. Grace, anything you want to add? Anything you learn? Anything you want to add? Um, no, actually, it's a question. Yeah. Um, usually, uh, when you talk about um, the scripture that we have just um, replaced the word reputation, it talks about the book of life. life. And generally, the book of life, we have um, associated it to be the book where our names will be called like Grace, Sonia, Caleb, like that is. Um, I was saying then that the book of life actually is not that in the J1 aspect, but it has your works written in it. I would think so. Uh, in Daniel, it talks about the books being opened up, books plural. Yeah. So there's more than one book in heaven. Yeah. There's actually a library in heaven. Yeah. Uh, or it's all in digital file, I have no idea. Uh, but anyhow, for them to understand it, of course, books, scrolls. <laughs> <laughs> so there's good there's more than one book and they yeah they have our works written in them and the works that are written down uh, if you really screw up that's not written down in the Psalm 130 that's not written down before you began the work before you began were born we know that by Ephesians 2:10 Vivian very quickly Ephesians 2:10 so keep going back remember the go eat popcorn after the Corinthians Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 go ahead and read it for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them did God write down bad works yeah. no. good works good works okay that wraps up our first lesson in season two